Hi, I'm Heath with Titan Machinery. i um, been a service tech here for just about 19 years. Today we're going to be going over the 8240 Combine. So the first thing we'll talk about here is the product feeding. Um, on your faceplate here, check these bolts to make sure that these aren't breaking. I have seen these bolts break as you start picking up these big heads. If you have one of these bolts that breaks, put all three of them in. Um, there is the heavy duty and the standard duty option. If you have the 12 point bolts up here, you have the heavy duty option for, for it. These, the 12 point ones aren't as susceptible to breaking as the 6 point ones are. Um, but just one thing to keep an eye on is make sure that these three bolts are still here for your pivot. The face plate, right down on the bottom here, I've started to see these where they'll start getting wore out and you'll actually start exposing the plastic wear plate that's under there. If this gets wore and starts getting cut back here, what it'll do is it'll start wearing on that plastic wear plate that's underneath it there. So what I do in a case like that is when this gets worn enough, I'll actually take and cut this piece out and weld a new piece in here. Um, you don't want to really get it wearing into that plastic because that's going to let the, let the face plate slide. And if it starts eating into that, your face plate cannot slide like it should. Another thing to look at is your feeder chain links. I usually go when the link is getting flat to this roller. I usually tell guys put in a new set of chains at that point. By then your chains have stretched out to the most that they can and it's time to be replacing them. On the sides of the feeder house there is the two spring gauges. Go till on the inside of the spring gauge there's a piece of steel in there. There's a steel pipe that goes over that bolt. So tighten it up till the spring hits that, that steel pipe in there. If you keep going with it, you'll actually run your chains too tight and then you chance stretching your chains more, breaking your chains. So don't run your feeder chains too tight, but if you, on the other portion of it, if you run them too loose, you'll actually start jumping the chain on the, on the sprockets back there. And when your chain jumps, one side will sit crooked on here and it'll actually stretch out your chain. And if you run it long enough that way, you won't be able to get it to where it'll run straight again because it'll get a memory and keep jumping to that way. Now we're gonna talk about the, the stripper plates and the, the wear pads under the chains. Um, there's four plastic wear pads that sit underneath your feeder chains in here. And when these pads get wore down enough, what it'll do is your chains will actually start cutting into the feeder house. So these plastic wear pads are replaceable. Just go in, pop them out, stick the new ones in. Um, and then also, right on the top here, you actually have your stripper plates up here. When your stripper plates get, your chains get cut into them, to where it's actually just about wore through your stripper plates. Um, you want to be replacing them and you want to make sure that these stripper plates stay adjusted correctly. Um, you want them as tight as you can to the sprocket, to, but you don't want it rubbing anywhere in here. Another thing to look at on these is your rock beater blades. When these start getting wore down enough, um, they, they won't actually do what they're supposed to and knock the rocks out into the trap. Um, these blades are also adjustable here. If you loosen all the bolts up on every one of the blades, pull them up as high as you can and get this thing as aggressive as it can to help with your stone protection. Another thing to look at in here is your feeder drive line here. There's a U-joint up here and one down here. Make sure that these U-joints are are in good shape and not getting wore. Also in behind your gearbox here, there's actually a shaft that drives your sprockets and your rock beater. I usually tell guys to pull this gearbox off, inspect your splines for wear, re-grease it and slide this gearbox back on. Another thing to look at, this plate that that gearbox is bolted to, make sure this plate isn't starting to get cracks in happening in it. 
Um, I have seen a few of them that do that. It's not been a real major deal, but I have seen a few of these plates starting to crack on the feeder hose here. Right behind this cover here, there's another another U-joint back there, and then there's two pillow blocks back here. Make sure these pillow blocks aren't wore out, for one thing. You know, just make sure there isn't a lot of movement happening on this drive line. So your header drive gearbox here, there's high tran oil that goes in here. If you're starting to run into these big chopping corn heads, we have actually switched these over to synthetic high tran. It helps keep this gearbox a lot cooler to where you don't actually start burning your seals out of there. So one other thing to look at on these is your lateral tilt cylinders. As these heads start getting bigger and heavier, we have seen some of these pins that'll start breaking in here for the lateral tilt. If you see this pin broke, just take and pivot your face plate and get a new pin stuck in there because that's what actually is holding the top of your lateral tilt cylinder. We haven't really seen it happening if you have the dual tilt cylinder. So if you have a cylinder on each side of the face plate, we haven't really seen it happening. But just with a single cylinder on the left side, um, as these heads get bigger, it'll start breaking that pin out. So one other thing to look at on these feeder hoses is actually get underneath of there and look at your feeder floor that goes along. Um, there's three sections of the feeder floor. Make sure that you don't have a hole in any one of them three sections under there. On the feeder chain tension, um, if you have a 10 and 20 series machine where you don't have the spring gauge in here, you can actually get a kit to where you'll weld this onto the side of the feeder hose and go to this spring gauge style. If you do go to this, you have to get the heavy, the heavy shaft that runs through the drum and that'll give you your, your heavy duty shaft and your feeder drum and the spring gauge tensioner. Under here, you have a hanger bearing. This is gonna be just a rubber mounted hanger bearing. So if you take this shield down, grab a hold of your drive line and see if you start having a lot of movement happening. If you got a lot of movement that's going on in here, replace this hanger bearing so you don't get a vibration that starts coming down this drive line. Basically, if you get a lot of vibration that starts happening in here, you can start cracking out the plates up on the front and you'll actually start breaking u-joints and stuff so so just go under here make sure you don't have movement on there to keep the vibration out of here so you don't start prematurely breaking or wearing stuff 